All right, here at Davis Wade Stadium, the place is cleared out. I'm one of the final people here at the press box, and we are fresh off Mississippi State's opening game of the season. The Bulldogs get a 48-7 win over southeastern Louisiana to open up the season 1-0. Zach Arnett now 2-0 as a head coach. You count that bowl game that he had, and he is now 2-0 as a head coach. So the winningest coach in Mississippi State history. There we go, by percentage. Um, and it wasn't a very pretty game from start to finish for Mississippi State, but I thought by the end of the game you saw what Mississippi State could be in a lot of ways. This is a team uh, in southeastern Louisiana that Mississippi State supposed to beat badly. They're, they were supposed to beat them by 35-plus points, um, and they did. So they did their job, I think, in this game. By the end of the ball game, you saw some continuity on the offensive side of the ball. You saw the defense really pick things up, I thought. But in the game, it started to play some really good defense. But there were some concerning things early on in the ball game, and we'll get to that. Um, I think the overall view of this ball game, and for myself coming into this game, my thoughts were Mississippi State needed to, to finish this ball game, uh, you know, with a, a forty to thirty-five to forty-point win, and hold uh, Southeastern Louisiana under ten points. I didn't see a, t a ton of alarming things for the defense. A lot of little things that they need to clean up but not a whole lot of things schematically that really kind of scares you. And they have so many guys on that defense that have played the last few years that, I mean, you just feel like at some point that defense is going to be a really consistent unit. Um, offense had a very rough start in this ball game, And Will Rogers even talked about when they came out in the second half and the offense was really kind of stagnant on that possession. They didn't get points after driving the ball down the field after the defense had gotten a, a good three and out to start the second half. and. I think Zach Arnett was wanting a really good start to that second half for the Bulldogs to kind of push the team forward. It was 20-7 to at the half, and it, there was really nothing in that half that was you know, really inspired for Mississippi State. I thought the kicking game was really good. Kyle Ferry, the true freshman, how about that kid, comes in in his first career ball game, a freshman kicker that was kicking in Arkansas last year as a high school senior, and was great, by the way. But still was a high school senior last year playing high school football in the state of Arkansas. He's thrust into the, the position of being Mississippi State's starting kicker, hits two 40-plus yard field goals, nails them, and gives State uh, six points on the board. I thought Kyle Ferry was excellent. I thought special teams as a whole was excellent. Um, there was a couple of punts that Zach Arnett said he would like to um, see a little more uh, length on those punts, but he also mentioned when you have a rugby-style kicker like Keelan Crimmins, who comes from Australia, you're going to have some of those punts that's not going to be, you know, 55 yards or anything like that. So, but you had two freshman kickers in this game today for Mississippi State. This is a young, you know, uh, special teams unit, but both of those guys I thought were good. Keelan Crimmins showed some good things and Cal Ferry obviously too, but that was really it for Mississippi State in that first half. Cal Ferry looked really good. And everything else is really inconsistent. The defense gave up a 16-play drive for Southeastern Louisiana, drove the ball 70-plus yards down the field, scored a, a few third downs and fourth down conversions that were really frustrating. Jet Johnson talked about that after the game, how frustrating that was for them to not be able to get off the field right there. And you got to get off the field against teams like Southeastern Louisiana. But to their credit, I thought the defense was very good the rest of the ball game. Uh, was pretty dominant. The defensive line started to kind of assert their will up front. I thought as the game went on, the depth kind of showed and, and the talent too up front for the two teams. The differences there really kind of showed up. Nathan Pickering, I thought, was outstanding. And that's a guy I've been really high on since you know his freshman year. When he's been in the ball game, which he's, you know, he's uh, opted out of a season, he's been hurt a little bit, didn't play a ton early as, as, uh, as a true freshman, and they pushed him in there and he was really disruptive. So when he's been in the ball games and when he's been allowed to kind of do his thing, he's been a disruptive guy. And this is his first year as a full-time starter. So there's a chance this guy can have a huge year. I thought he was very disruptive up front, constantly pushing the center and the, and the guards into the backfield. Got a lot of pressure today and, and caused some havoc back there. So I thought he was really good. I thought the linebackers got better as the game went on, tackling and uh, getting penetration in the backfield as well. J.P. Purvis played well off the bench. Deshaun Page got a start today at Sam. Uh, and then Jet Johnson and Nathan, Nathaniel Watson. Uh, Nate Watson was outstanding. Eight tackles led the team, had a sack and a half as well. So big game for him. Uh, and this is going to be a huge season, I think, for, for both Nathaniel Watson and Jet Johnson. 
So, you know, I thought the defense, as the, the game went on, the defense really settled in and, and played their brand of football. And this is still a work in progress. I mean, Matt Brock has been here for the last four years. It's still Zach Garnett's scheme. It's a 3-3-5 scheme, but it's a little different uh, because you have a new guy calling plays there. And you got, you know, I, I thought they, they did a, a good job of keeping guys fresh and getting the backups in the ball game the way that they did. Played a lot of players, but with that came a little bit of uh, you know rust needing to be knocked off and guys kind of getting used to to being out there. But the defense did kind of come along, and that's a group that's got to be really good for Mississippi State this year. Uh, moving to the offensive side of the ball, you know the defense gave up I think over, just a little over 200 yards and 79 or whatever it was came on that one drive. So uh, the defense was was you know fairly good today uh, in the grand scheme of things. The offense was kind of a tale of, of two halves for me. I thought that it, it got out to a, a, a rough start offensively, a lot of miscommunication, a lot of you know guys not really on the same page. It looked to me like an offense that is going through a changeover. You got a new scheme. You have the, these offensive linemen have now tightened those splits that they had in the air raid. They're now running a more traditional offense, and, and it's an offense that – a lot of these guys are used to, but you're still switching over from three years in the air raid to now this pro style offense. I didn't think really. I didn't think there was a whole lot wrong with the play calling. I didn't think there was a whole lot wrong with the scheme. I, I liked a lot of the plays that Kevin Barbe drew up. Um, a lot of the misdirection, getting the ball to the wide receivers on run plays. I mean, I thought that was fantastic. That's stuff that we've wanted to see uh, with Mississippi State for the last three years. And uh, I thought Kevin Barbe did a good job getting those playmakers the ball. Uh, just the execution wasn't there at, at times, but I thought as the game went on, you started to see that progression of this offense, this offense kind of growing as a unit. That's going to continue to happen you know, as the year goes on. You, you're going to see some ups and downs, I think, with this offense. But Will Rogers got a little more comfortable. I thought when they put Mike Wright in the game, it just was the different kind of dynamic. It looked like the offense was a little more fluid. They didn't run a whole lot of plays consecutively with him in there, but when he was in there, they're running, you know, some more zone read and things like that. He's keeping the ball. He came out, and I, I thought when he ran the football, I mean, it, that's just a different kind of guy. There's not that many guys in this league that are able to run like that. I mean, he's an absolute deer out there, and I think just under 100 yards rushing on five or six carries, whatever it was, that's a guy that's going to help this team this year because there are not many players like that out there for, for in, in the SEC and for Mississippi State especially. And he's a totally different quarterback than Will Rogers. There are some different things that they could probably do to disguise what he does and maybe add a few more elements with him. Um, I thought, you know, keeping Will Rogers in there at wide receiver, I don't know how what that does for you. It's kind of you're not you're taking away, you know, an extra player that could probably uh, deceive a defense or something like that. You kind of know what you're what you're getting. At least that's what it looked like today. And that's, you know, could have been a, a total vanilla um, play calling day for Kevin Barbe. I don't know, but I think Mar uh, Michael Wright's going to help this team a lot. Jaquavius Marks career day um, over 130 yards rushing, first 100 yard game for Jaquavius Marks in his career, and he was really excited about that. First 100 yard game for Mississippi State rushing, having a player with 100 yards. Since 2019, they did that a couple of times um, in 2019, a few times in 2019, with you know Callen Hill and guys like that. But obviously, you're switching from the air raid to this offense. You're going to see the running game uh, really get going for Mississippi State, and it was kind of weird seeing that happen. You, you don't have the 300-yard passing game; you have the 100-yard rushing game, which is what State fans have been accustomed to having most of their lives. It's, it's now back for, for the Bulldogs. Now, but I thought they were very balanced. Uh, Will Rogers, 20 of 29, was really accurate for the most part. The ball wasn't just flying all over the place. I thought he was, uh, I thought he was pretty uh, accurate. And on top of that, took some more shots down the field. I mean, he was averaging uh, about 12 yards of completion, which is a step up from what he was doing in the air raid. So you're starting to see a, a few more passes down the field. And I think this offense is going to continue to, to get better and better as the year goes on. I like the scheme. I think that they have the players in position to do some big things in this offense. 
and uh, it was a it was overall a good day for the offense. Over 500 yards of total offense. You got your true freshman Creed Whitmore in there. Tula Griffin was a little banged up during the game. Xavier Thomas did not play. We expect him possibly to be back next week. That's the hope. Um, he had a uh, just if you didn't know, we reported this on the on the message board the other day. That's why it's important to be a, a subscriber to 247 Sports. We'll go ahead and get that shameless plug in. Um, but Xavion was stepped on on his ankle, I think, last week or a couple weeks ago, and had a huge cut on his ankle, had to get stitches put in, came back to practice, and it was stepped on again, busted the st stitches open, and he's sitting there now um, missing game one, which – State could survive without him, and you want to make sure that heals up properly, and hopefully he can get back in the game soon. But, you know, Tula Griffin had a good game, had some good opportunities, but for the most part in the first half was, was hurt um, and did come back in the second half, so he's fine. But Cree Whitmore got his opportunity, and the freshman just looked fantastic. 57 yards um, receiving, I think, on four catches, two rushes for 59 yards at a 33-yard run. That was a big uh, um, play for Mississippi State for the touchdown. Two touchdowns for Cree Whitmore. I think that kid's going to be really good. Will Rogers said post game got a chance to be really special. And this is a guy I wrote about it on our site. You can go read the story tonight. This is a guy that was playing quarterback last year for Buck Holtz High School. His father was the head coach there in Gainesville, right outside of Gainesville. I mean, I, I can't I can't fathom going from first of all quarterback to wide receiver and excelling at it on this level, but doing it in your first game as a true freshman, that's that's so difficult to do. But he was outstanding. We got a chance to talk to him post game. You can watch that on uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, he was great. I thought he had a great ball game. And, and State's offense by the end of the game was really clicking. And you saw the depth that they have. A lot of guys played today. That's another thing to remember. You have t uh, two new coordinators. You have a new head coach. You have a lot of players on this team that they're wanting to get playing time. And they had to get them in the ball game. This is a perfect opportunity. So it was a little hectic at times on, on the offensive side and the defensive side. But by the second half, I thought the, the, everything kind of aligned for Mississippi State. And that's what you want to see. Uh, it's OK if you come out out of the gates and you're struggling. But if you're steadily getting better, and this applies to the entire season, you're going to be where you want to be at the end of the year. If you're steadily getting better throughout the course of a ball game, you're going to be where you want to be in the fourth quarter, and State was steadily getting better. That's what gives me you know, enough confidence that everything right now is, is uh, going to plan for Mississippi State. Now, you've got some big-time games over the next few weeks. Arizona's coming in here next week. LSU's coming in here. You're going to South Carolina. You're hosting Alabama. They're going to get their old check pretty quick, so they've got to clean these things up very quickly. But... We did see this team get better and better as the game went on, and I think that should be the case for this team. If they're doing, if they're doing right, if the players are coming to practice every day and they're coming to learn and they're coming to get better every day, you're going to see things get better and better for this team. And this is a good start. I, th I think it's a really good start for Mississippi State to uh, come out here and, and get the win the way that they did against Southeastern Louisiana. Wasn't perfect, but if you look at the game as a whole, you look at the stat sheet, you look at what State did in the second half, I think State fans should be pleased with what happened with week one. Now in week two, you've obviously got to get better. You've got an Arizona team that's going to be more talented significantly than this team in Southeastern Louisiana. It's a team that's going to want to come here and get a huge win. This is going to be like their Super Bowl coming to an SEC school and also beating a team that beat them at their stadium last year. So this is a huge game for State to try to get off to that 2-0 start on the year. and with LSU, South Carolina, and Alabama in three straight weeks, Mississippi State needs every win that they can get. They're trying to get to um, bowl eligibility, of course, this year, but you know a lot of us has, have predicted eight wins for this team. These non-conference games are must for the Bulldogs to find a way to get to an eight-win season, nine-win season. They've got to win all these non-conference games. So right now, 1-0, that's a good start to the season for the Bulldogs. Got a big-time uh, win in this game. Came in and did what you had to do. Um, this is an FCS team. Mississippi State is supposed to beat an FCS team, 48 to seven. So that you know the Bulldogs had mission accomplished in game one. But I can promise you, Zach Arnett and his staff are right back in the lab tonight, and are going to be back to work on uh, Sunday, ready to go. So uh, appreciate you guys checking in on this. 
uh, was good to meet a lot of you guys today. I was out in the junction uh, going around. A lot of people stopped, talked about the podcast, talked about the state script. You guys know how Brian uh, Haydad and myself feel about this. The field looks great, by the way, uh, with that midfield logo. Saw a lot of interlocking logo. I mean, it was just, it was beautiful. It was great to see those great designs on these shirts uh, around the junction. Everybody was really excited for the day. I thought the crowd was solid. Could have been a little better, but I thought, you know, it was a good crowd. I know state fans love dove hunting, so there was a lot of people out there dove hunting. But next week is a big one, 6 p.m., Arizona. Should be a great atmosphere, and I know uh, these state players are ready to get back to work. All right, guys, we'll be back probably on Monday night. I'm going to try to do a Talking Dogs uh, live chat, so we'll get a chance to talk again in just a couple of days. I hope you guys have a great Labor Day uh, weekend. Enjoy that day off on Monday. And uh, we'll be back with you on Monday afternoon, Monday evening, to talk a little more Mississippi State sports. This has been Robbie Falk. I'm signing off from Davis Wade Stadium. We'll talk to you later.